Hi everyone, I'm Mr. Fullerton and today I'd like to talk to you for a few minutes about orbits. Our goal is going to be to explain the apparent weightlessness that objects feel when they're in orbit and understand what they mean by apparent weightlessness and really what's going on for an object that is circling a planet in orbit. So to begin with, how do orbits work? The best way to think about this from my perspective is to go back to a thought experiment that Isaac Newton developed many, many years ago. He said, imagine that there is a mountain on Earth so high that the top of the mountain is actually above the atmosphere. And that's a very important part of this thought experiment because it means we can neglect friction, air resistance. If we put a cannon on top of this mountain that is above the surface of the Earth and above the atmosphere, and we were to shoot a cannon from it, it would travel for some distance in a parabolic path before returning to the Earth. If we shot it with a little bit more velocity, it'll go a little bit further before returning to Earth. If we shot it with even more velocity, it travels even further around the curvature of the Earth before it hits the Earth. And if we shot it with enough velocity following this green path, the projectile, the cannonball, would be moving so fast that the Earth would curve away underneath it. So it's constantly falling, but it's moving so fast that it's staying at the same altitude above the Earth because the Earth curves away underneath it, because the shape of the Earth is roughly spherical. That's what an orbit actually is. It's not an object that is so far away that there is no force of gravity on it and the objects are weightless. There's actually quite a bit of weight or force of gravity on those objects. They're just moving so fast around the surface of the planet, in this case Earth, that the Earth curves away underneath them as they fall. So it's almost as if you're constantly falling. That's what an orbit is. Now the gravitational field strength for the space shuttle in orbit is something we can fairly easily calculate. If the space shuttle orbits Earth at an altitude of 380 kilometers above the surface of the Earth, what does the gravitational field strength do to the Earth while it's in orbit? Well, to figure that out, we can use Newton's law of universal gravitation. Force of gravity equals the universal gravitational constant, big G, times the mass of the object, m1, mass of the ob other object, which will be our planet, over the square of the distance between them, the square of the distance from the space shuttle to the center of the Earth. Or if we want just the gravitational field strength due to the Earth, that will be big G times the mass of the Earth divided by the square of the distance from the center of the Earth to the object, in this case the space shuttle. And we can look up big G. The mass of the Earth is a fairly well-known constant, and the radius of the Earth is a fairly well-known constant. So we can substitute in for these values. Little g is equal to big G, 6.67 times 10 to the minus 11 Newton meters squared per kilogram squared. The mass of the Earth is roughly 5.98 times 10 to the 24 kilograms. The radius of the Earth is about 6.37 times 10 to the 6th meters. And we'll have to add to that the distance the space shuttle is above the surface of the Earth, or 380 kilometers, or 380 times 10 to the 3rd meters. And that total distance is squared. And when I plug that into my calculator, I come up with the value for g of about 8.75 newtons per kilogram which is equivalent to 8.75 meters per second squared. Not a whole lot different than the 9.8 meters per second squared we feel on the surface of the Earth. So what does all this really mean? Well, the acceleration due to gravity at the altitude the astronauts are orbiting the Earth is really only about 11% less than what we feel on the surface of the Earth. So there's still quite a bit of acceleration due to gravity. The space shuttle's falling, but it's, fa but it's moving so fast horizontally that by the time it falls, the Earth has curved away underneath the space shuttle. So the shuttle remains at the same distance from the center of the Earth. 
Now to maintain an orbit of 380 kilometers, the space shuttle travels approximately 7,680 meters per second. That's over 17,000 miles per hour, roughly 23 times the speed of sound at sea level. So the space shuttle is moving very, very fast to maintain this orbit. Let's take a look at another sample problem. Let's calculate the magnitude of the centripetal force acting on the Earth as it orbits the Sun, assuming a circular orbit, which isn't too far off, and an orbital speed of about 3 times 10 to the 4 meters per second. And of course, the centripetal force in this case is going to be caused by gravity. So we know that the centripetal force is going to be mass times the centripetal acceleration, or mass times the square of velocity divided by the radius. In this case, our mass is going to be the mass of the Earth, 5.98 times 10 to the 24 kilograms times the square of the velocity, 3 times 10 to the 4 meters per second squared divided by the radius, and we'll take the best known estimate for the mean radius from the center of the Sun to the center of the Earth, roughly 1.5 times 10 to the 11 meters and I come up with the value of about 3.59 times 10 to the 22nd Newtons. An awful lot of force to keep the Earth in its circular orbit. Let's take a look at one more. This diagram represents two satellites of equal mass, satellite A and satellite B, that are in circular orbits around a planet. Compare the magnitude of the gravitational force of attraction between satellite A and the planet and the magnitude of the gravitational force of attraction between satellite B and the planet. And to do this, we have to note that the distance between the center of A and the center of the planet is 1R, and the distance between the center of the planet and our second satellite B is 2R, twice as great. Well, to solve this problem, I'm going to start off with Newton's law of universal gravitation. Force of gravity is g m1 m2 over r squared. And in this case, for both satellite A and satellite B, the mass of the planet is the same, and the mass of the satellite is the same. Big G is a constant, so it's the same, so the only thing that's changing is this distance between them. And since that's squared for B in the denominator, B is twice as far away as A is from the planet, therefore B is going to have one-fourth as great the gravitational force of attraction. Don't forget that that denominator, R squared, is the inverse square law relationship. Hope this was helpful. If you want more information about orbits, check out www.aplusphysics.com. Thanks and have a great day.